The Handspring Visor. Released in 1999, this unassuming product had a grand plan to change the world. Before we can discuss the visor, we first need to talk about how it came to be. Jeff Hawkins, a widely recognized genius of the tech world, had created Palm, a small software company whose primary focus was to develop software for the ill-fated Casio Zuma handheld computer. With Donald Dubinsky as CEO and Jeff's belief that there wasn't any good mobile hardware on the market worth developing software for, they pivoted and moved into the hardware and software business. With the hardware business being a much more costly affair, the business needed capital. And that came in the form of modem manufacturer US Robotics, which acquired Palm, which was then later acquired by 3Com, another modem manufacturer. And this being 1997, modem businesses weren't doing so hot. Yet Palm was doing surprisingly well. They were taking the world by storm and sales were increasing. And by the year 1998, they'd sold over 30 million Palm devices. Their parent company was holding them back. Donna went to 3Com to ask if they could spin out Palm, so they could be financially independent. But that was met with a resounding no. She was told that Palm would never spin out as its own company. Donna knew that with one hand tied behind their back, they couldn't grow. So right there and then, she resigned on the spot, for her and Jeff. Together, Donna and Jeff were to start a new venture. And so confident were people in Jeff's abilities that they secured venture capital before even having a plan. And from that, Handspring was born. So as to not to start from scratch, they secured a licensing deal from Palm for the OS, and they set out to make their own device. With excitement and rumors circulating around what Handspring would be offering, it wasn't until the 13th of September, 1999, that the visor would be announced to the world. Unfortunately for Handspring, 3Com decided to spontaneously reverse their decision and announced their plans to spin off Palm and hold an IPO. Coincidentally, the day before Handspring's announcement. And in business terms, that's a dick move. In spite of all that, they still managed to make a splash, releasing their flagship products, the Visor Solo and the Visor Deluxe. The Deluxe being a slightly more powerful version than the Solo, and the Solo itself being more powerful than the top of the line palm offering at the market at the time. Not only that, the Deluxe came in cheaper than the cheapest palm on the market at the time. Handspring has arrived and they were ready for a fight. So the Solo came in a classic black, while the Deluxe also came in a variety of other colours, which I think it's fair to say got its inspiration from a certain popular tech trend at the time. So in addition to the graphite, there was translucent blue, ice, orange and green. And I'm sure that most will agree that it still looks amazing today. I have the blue and it definitely has that timeless feel about it. Of course, in many ways, the visor was a similar product to what was offered from Palm, with a similar form factor, button layout, and graffiti area. But there was more. You see, still running the Palm OS, albeit slightly improved, Handspring had to find a way to differentiate the visor from Palm. Jeff still had his end goal of making a wireless communication device. The trouble was, in 1999, wireless communication was a difficult market to get into. There was a lot of competing standards, and if you did pick a radio, it would mean the device would be expensive, cutting out a huge chunk of your market. They needed another idea, and they got inspiration from an unlikely place. The Springboard Module. This would allow devices to be shipped without the expensive features that users may or may not want, and allow them to add them later, as and when they were developed. The development of which was opened up to external developers, and a large number of add-ons were made, from basic memory backup, to software on a cartridge, including some banger games. One cartridge had pocket chess, while another had eight games on it, including Low Runner, Blackjack, Solitaire, officially licensed Tetris, and pocket chess, for the same price. But the bigger hitting games were Tiger Woods PGA, or V Rally. I mean, come on, it's essentially a Game Boy at this point. As well as a handful of other software titles, including dictionaries, and of course, the Bible. The Bible is rich with trivia. But the beauty of the Springboard module was the hardware expansion, bringing such features as cameras, wired modems, GPS modules, and even a massage module for a quick shiatsu between meetings. 
So the biggest problem that we have was to try to design electronic circuitry to produce a waveform for each of the uh, massaging modes. That means squeezing, chopping, and tapping. You can't believe it. The first time when we did it, it was scary, you know, because it was like electrocuting a man. You know? And of course, it gained a number of cellular modules. And with forward thinking of Jeff and the rest of the handspring team, for adding a microphone to the front of every visor, it essentially became a fully fledged smartphone. Although, to be fair, people did say the call quality was a bit iffy. The visor credits its name to Jeff's 10 year old daughter, basing it on the word advisor. It's impressive to think that one of your kids could help you come up with such a successful product name. Hey girls, I need the help for a new name. I'm looking for a new product. It's going to be aimed towards business users. So what sort of names are you thinking? Banana. I just think they're holding me back. Over its lifespan, there were seven visor models released, each bringing improved speed and RAM and keeping its similar form factor. All apart from the Edge, which in the name of making a thinner device had to sacrifice its springboard module. But it came with an adapter that aptly plugs into an Edge connector on the top of the device to give back full compatibility to all the springboard modules. Ooh, so thin. With the growing features of PDAs at the time, they really were starting to become their own independent devices, but they weren't quite there yet. And they were still just extensions of the desktop, a way of taking your data with you when you were out and about. This was done with a visor using the same hot sync functionality as Palm users were already used to. By either cradle or cable, the data and the apps were kept in sync. Unless you had a memory backup or some kind of wireless communication module, you're really at the perils of keeping a charge on the device to keep your data safe. All the memory was volatile. So if you forgot to swap your batteries out in time, everything, including all those pictures you'd just taken using your eye module, would be gone. And talking of batteries, over half the visor models ran on two AAA batteries, while the rest, the Prism, Pro and Edge, had built-in lithium-ion batteries. And I'm impressed to say that this Edge can hold a charge for up to a week, admittedly with light use, but this thing was made in 2001. The stylus on the Edge also stands out, quite literally, just hanging on the Edge with this little latch to keep it in place. But due to this, it misses out on a trick that the other visors have. As you can see on this deluxe, if you slide it out, there's a little secret lurking at the top. It unscrews to reveal a Phillips screwdriver. So you can take the thing apart whilst on the go. And that's not all. On the Platinum model, there's another secret. Not only is there the screwdriver in the top, if you unscrew the bottom, there's also a pin to reset the device. In case you need to quickly get rid of the evidence of all the love letters you've written to Jeff. Software-wise, it had the entire Palm library to fall back on. So an extensive range of things from business apps to games. A lot of the time, software could be bought on discs like these. Well, internet app stores weren't quite so big then. But I do have a memory of getting most of my software off the internet in those days, one way or another. Yeah, leave it on overnight. I wake up, I have every Seinfeld episode ever made on my computer. Wow. <laughs> Here I have the Wingear Palm Utilities 2001 and Palm Games 2001, with over 900 utility apps and over 270 games. I'm not sure why the people making the disc didn't know exact numbers there. Anyway, I've installed a few of these, so let's have a look. Here's a definitely official looking game, Donkey Kong Jr. Which appears to be a Game & Watch clone. Let's see what else this developer's worked on. Larry Yo Brothers, Fire, and Moon Patrol. Looking at his website at the time, it would appear he was focused on porting Game & Watch and arcade titles to the Palm platform. Not long after this, he got a cease and desist in the post from Nintendo. More recently, the developer put out all the source code for these games on GitHub, 
which, if you got the time, is an interesting thing to dig through. So, some other random games on there with this pinball, which is okay once you work out the controls. And this Rapid Racer, which name rings a bell? I don't think it's related. This was one of the hardest games I've ever had to control, which I think is probably more of a me problem than the game. But if you want a challenge, this one's for you. It also offers infrared play. I might have to make a friend to try that one out. Another thing to note on this paid disc of games is they all seem to be unregistered. Although I may have missed something that explains how to do that. When using a springboard module, the device springs to life in a very quick and satisfying manner. As you can see, there's a menu screen and all the titles on the cartridge are listed, which you can jump right into. Like this rather good official port of Tetris, which is an ideal game for this. The game's also sharp as their own icons. So when using the device normally, if you see a game you like, you can just click on the icon and jump straight into it. Here's Load Runner, for example. And a couple of accessories also came with the visor, like this dust cover for the springboard module for when you're not using it. A plastic screen protector, although this was replaced with the metal flip cover that you can find on the edge. And the docks, for hot sinking and charging the battery based models. As you can see, the dock has a much improved slimline design on the edge, which, as you're going to be using it more for charging, is a good thing. There's also a leather case for it to slip into, and there's even this handy case for the GPS module. In early 2002, Handspring said goodbye to the visor to focus on the communication first device, the Trio. And not long after that, Palm would acquire Handspring and bring it back into the fold, making an end to this short-lived company that tried to lead the way just a bit too soon. Thanks for watching.